Well, I'll only and I do up here all well, and I do up here all having a cracking Sunday as well. How is this the best? Inspirational and fearless maiden speech you really have to watch. Now, this is Labour MP Zara Sultanas, and she gave her maiden speech on the 15th of January 2020. And let's just say, she pulled no punches. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to make my maiden speech today. I would like to start by giving a heartfelt thanks to the people of Coventry South for putting their faith in me. I am truly honoured and humbled to be their representative. I'd also like to thank my predecessor, Jim Cunningham, for his service to the constituency. He served Coventry for 27 years, meaning he was an MP before I was even born. He has been a champion for the city, fighting for Coventry to get its fair share of regional investment, defending our industries and speaking up for causes from waspy women to Rowan's Law. I know Jim was renowned in this House for the frequency of his interventions. As a new member for Coventry South, I aim to continue that tradition and I wish him well in his retirement. As for Coventry, did you know, Mr Deputy Speaker, that on several occasions the city has been the capital of England? As far back as 1404, Henry IV summoned a parliament in Coventry. <coughs> so given we'll have to move out of this place for renovations, may I suggest that we take parliament back to Coventry to put power back in the Midlands? It is a city fitting the prestige, from the beautiful cathedral to 49 hectares of the beautiful War Memorial Park. Coventry South is a constituency of scenic beauty. It is a city of rich culture too, and I look forward to Coventry hosting the UK City of Culture 2021. It is a city with a history of challenging convention, of struggle and of solidarity. From being home to two universities, two-tone music, and bands like The Select and The Specials, to founding one of the first Indian Workers Association branches. Coventry has been at the forefront of the arts, anti-racist organising and industrial militancy. Mm-hmm. And from welcoming Irish migrants in the 1960s and 1950s and 1960s, who built the city's booming car industry, to housing the largest population of Syrian refugees in recent years, Coventry proudly continues to be a sanctuary to people in need of a place to call home. Mr Deputy Speaker, I was just 14 when the global financial crisis struck and reckless bankers sent the economy into free fall. I was still a teenager when David Cameron and George Osborne began implementing their austerity agenda. Now I know conventionists were made in speeches to avoid saying anything members opposite will find disagreeable, but I can't do that. (laughs) <laughs> because my generation has only ever faced a future of rising rents, frozen wages and diminishing opportunities. For my whole adult life, I've only known Tory governments that wage war on working class communities like mine. Cutting our services, underfunding our schools and hospitals, saddling me and my generation with tens of thousands of pounds of student debt. And now the manufacturing jobs that were the backbone of Coventry, that brought my family from Kashmir to the region, are now few and far between. The public libraries that allowed me to study and go to university are closed. The council houses that allowed working class families like mine access safe, affordable homes have been sold off. And while the vast majority have seen services cut and wages stagnate over the past decade, the super rich have had their taxes cut and their incomes soar. The gap between the ruling class and the working class has widened and is widening. And the response from members opposite is, as it always has been, to divide and rule. That's what's happening when they compare Muslim women to bank robbers, when they call gay men tank-topped bumboys, and when they blame events like the Hillsborough disaster on drunken fans. They are pitting our communities against each other. They are diverting attention away from the billionaires that fund their party, dodge their taxes and rig the economy. Well, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm a working class Muslim woman and I know the Bullingdon boys will never be on my side. And they will never be on the side of the shop stewards in Coventry, the cleaners in Carlisle, migrant workers in Manchester or teachers in Tottenham. I know know my Muslim brothers and sisters, my Jewish comrades, my friends in the Gypsy, Traveller and Roma communities and people of all faiths and none are safer when we unite to defeat the far right, even as this government has given them them newfound confidence. 
and I know that a government that abandons refugee children abroad will just as quickly abandon working class children in Britain, where one in three already live in poverty, because this is a government of the few and it will never be for the many. Mr Deputy Speaker, the prospects of five more years of this government is almost enough to make me despair, but my generation and I cannot afford to despair. Because if we do, then by the time I reach middle age, it will be too late. The climate emergency will have become the climate catastrophe. So I come here with a message from my generation and my constituents. We have no intention of letting that happen. We have seen Australia burn and Indonesia drown. We have seen our earth teeter on the brink of ruin. We have heard the warnings of scientists, and we know where the blame lies. It's with the 100 companies that are responsible for 70% of global pollution. It's with the billionaires who got rich polluting our rivers and pumping out carbon. It's with an economic system that puts the profits of the rich above the needs of the people. So make no mistake about it, the climate crisis is a capitalist crisis and the climate struggle is a class struggle across borders. Whether you're in Coventry or Canberra, Doncaster or Delhi, if you're working class, you'll suffer the worst effects of floods, fires, droughts and devastation, while the rich will build ever higher walls to protect themselves. That's what's coming. That's what's coming unless we take bold action. It's what will happen unless we unite working people across borders to say our lives are more important than anyone's profits. It's what will happen unless we put power in the hands of the working class to put people and planet first. This is the urgent call of our times, an international Green New Deal to transition from disaster capitalism to a new society created on the principles of equality, freedom and justice. Building green industries, providing good unionised jobs, democratising our economy and eradicating poverty. That new society has an old name. It's a name that inspired past generations in the fight against mass unemployment, war and fascism. It's the name they gave to a decent, livable, healthy future on this planet. That name is socialism. Mr Deputy Speaker, 10 years ago I was sitting in my GCSEs at school. I was a teenager and I never dreamed I would be here today. <laughs> in 10 years time, at the start of the next decade, I want to look teenagers in the eye and say with pride, my generation faced 40 years of Thatcherism and we ended it. We faced rising racism and we defeated it. We faced a planet in peril, we <coughs> saved it. We have our work cut out, but together we can do it. Thank you. Yeah. Julian Keegan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr yeah. Deputy Speaker. May I congratulate you on your re-election yeah. to the chair. And it is a pleasure to follow the honourable member for uh, Coventry South. Uh, well done. Actually, something else about Coventry South. It was also the home to my great-grandmother, or Granny Coventry, as we used to call her. Um, and I welcome another working-class voice uh, to this chamber, uh, alongside myself, who grew up in Knowsley and Merseyside, and um, both my... Uh, Honourable friends for Baron Furness, Furness and uh, Birmingham Northfield, um, who made excellent maiden speeches. Um, it's clear yeah. they'll be strong champions to improve the lives of people in their area and actually proving that power is in the hands of the working class. It's just on this side of the chamber. Um, working class Tories, eh? Never get my head round them. And this working class Tories. I've been in power for far too long in my eyes. But nice tribute from Gillian Keegan, all the same. But anyway, loved how Zara Sultana didn't hold back on the bodge either and 12 years of Tory austerity. Well done, young lady. And I'm sure Coventry South are very proud of her, as very clearly she's very proud of being given the opportunity to represent them. But what do you guys think? Is there a maiden speech that resonated with you? Let me know in comments below and, uh, my friends, I shall bid you farewell and take care.